It's going real slow. Hmm. Come on. It's not looking good on my end again. <laughs> oh. Just wait for everyone to find me, and then we'll see how it's looking on their end. Hey guys, how's it? How is it now? Is it better? Testing, testing. One, two, three. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> let me know if that's better. Thumbs up for Julie, that's good. No delay, yes, okay. I didn't do anything different, you guys. I just, uh, awesome. All right, I just shut it down and booted it back up. Hooray, <laughs> we fixed the thing. Great, okay. All right, I'm just going to uh, post that new link <laughs> to that group so nobody's lost. Thanks for bearing with me, guys, I appreciate it. Who knows why that happened? I didn't do anything. I didn't uh, switch off my internet. I just literally said stop streaming, did it again. I don't know. I'll never understand. Okay, I'm just going back to the event page to post that again. Thanks guys for uh, popping back in and letting me know it's all good. And hello again everybody. Yes, Lynn, it'll be available on YouTube actually right after I'm done. Excellent, much better. Yay, everyone says all good. Excellent. So yeah, Lynn, I have a YouTube page. It's actually linked in the description. Uh, it goes by the same name as this Facebook page. It's uh, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. And what I do is I upload all the videos to that YouTube page maybe a few hours after. It just takes a little bit for it to upload, but they're all up there. All of my past ones are up there, so if you want to see what I've done in the past, you can do that as well. Yeah. That's the idea, and then they're just there if you want to rewatch on your own time. All good. Can't see any comments, Carol. Can anyone else see comments right now? Thanks, Pam. That's okay, Paula. I hope you feel better. Take a little rest. Even if you want to just watch along for a little bit, that's cool too. Maybe it'll relax you a bit, and then you can paint on your own time. Hey, Sherry. Oh. I said, hey, Sherry, not hey, Siri. <laughs> Charlene, yes, I got a few requests actually for a baseball type painting. So if we wanted a little more local, maybe I'll think of doing a Blue Jays one for sure. Oh, your husband wants to know, huh? Okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll think about it. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can come up with. When I say I'll think about it, I really mean uh, I'll try and think of a design. Oh, Alexis, you have a delay. Anyone else have a delay? Alexis, I'm sorry. I think most people said it was good now. Yeah, and on my side it looks pretty good. Maybe uh, try exiting out and then restarting again. That might help. No worries, Lynn. Okay, I'm glad it's good for you, Dorothy. No worries, Bridget. You can wait till you find a canvas. Uh, or you can paint on something else, too. A lot of people paint on other things as well. Yeah, Alexis, uh, yeah, a lot of people are saying it's all good now, so you might want to try restarting your internet or just shutting this down, popping it back up. It might be something on your end. Okay, edit. There we go. Just taking care of the last few people here asking where I am. Oh yeah, that's true. So whoever was asking about not seeing comments, who was that? That was Carol, I think, right? Yes. Carol, uh, if you're full screen, you might not be able to see them. You might need to minimize here and there. So try that. Fixed. There we go. Okay. You're welcome, Deb. No problem. Good. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you're saying all good. Awesome. Okay, guys, without further ado, I'll uh, show you some. <laughs> oh, Karn, we got lots of people in Facebook. <laughs> you should check it out. You can uh, you can chat with everyone there, but I'll, otherwise I'll keep watching you and chatting with you too. Watch this, guys. We have a... Uh, so Char for, for anyone who didn't know, Charlene was really hoping for a nice uh, 
Niagara Falls painting, and she was requesting some sort of a rainbow element, and I kind of did that. I mean, there are lots of colors in it. I wouldn't say it's a full-on rainbow, but uh, yeah, there are all the colors in it. Hey, Melissa. Ready? There we go. So I painted this live on Twitch today with the help of Karn, who I keep shouting out, and a few others who were joining in today. They all helped me out, kind of design this. We had some inspiration photos from... Uh, from Google Images, and then I tried to put in that nice rainbow element. We have a nice sunset feature. What do you think? <laughs> so I'll post this up semi soon, I'm sure, probably in the next couple weeks. You guys like? Awesome, awesome. I'm so glad. I'm always nervous when I'm painting a new one, you know? I'm always like, oh no. Okay, awesome. I'm glad you guys like it. So good. Okay, so I'll post this up soon. Um, I still have some plans for other paintings before because, oh, I'm glad Charlene, especially Charlene, because you were the one requesting it. Awesome, I'm glad you all love it. Yay! Got lots of wows. Amazing. Okay, cool, cool. Thanks, guys. That's really great to hear. And uh, yeah, I have plans for obviously, we're doing a painting on Saturday, on Sunday. Uh, maybe I could I could do this one next week, I guess. Yeah, I'm glad you guys like it. It's actually the same size canvas. But, oh, big canvas for you, you mean, Charlene, of course. Yeah, that's what you were saving it for. <laughs> big canvas time, yeah. Oh, I am, Naomi. Yes, that's the whole point. So uh, Charlene was really requesting Niagara Falls. That's what I did. Remember, I've been taking lots of requests. I've been writing down what everybody wants to see. So, yeah, we're, I'm going to be teaching that one in the next, uh, let's say, in the next two weeks. Because I have the cherry blossom painting, that one's coming up on Saturday. So this one here. So that was the one we were all voting on today when I said, could you please choose some cherry blossoms or fish? This was the winter cherry blossoms. So this will be Saturday at 2 p.m. I believe I said. Fishies will be on Sunday. I'm not sure if I have that one beside me. I would show you, but I just don't think it's right here. Do you want to see the Father's Day one? I am curious on your opinions on the Father's Day one too, because I want to get it right, because a lot of people were asking about a nice fishing one for Father's Day. Oh, we're at 8 o'clock too. Do I have time? I'll show the Father's Day one, okay? I want your opinions on that too. And be honest too, I just, uh, so this, I tried this like three different times. Three different times. I didn't like the first two at all. This third one, I think it's much better in terms of layout and concept and everything. So uh, here's the Father's Day one that I came up with. And there you go. Obviously customizable if you want to do more children, long hair, whatever, two parents, although it is Father's Day. So here's that one. I don't know if there's any quick opinions on it or like things that you were hoping to see, things that are missing, but that's what I came up with. Just a nice simple kind of sunset look on the lake, on the dock. And we got some silhouettes fishing. So let me know, otherwise I, I still have time to play around, that's why I'm asking everybody what you think. And uh, I also used inspiration from photos that people sent me as well. People were sending me photos of silhouettes and uh, just the whole concept of fishing everyone was kind of hoping for, so I hope that one works as well. All right, we got lots of good feedback, that's awesome, thanks guys. Nice. Okay, so I was thinking we would do that one on the actual Father's Day, so on the Sunday. Uh, if anyone has opinions, we can talk about it. But, uh, yeah, I think that would be best. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, Bridget, exactly, a dog next to the man, you can do anything like that. You can uh, change it up to match your family, your father, whatever you like, or make it your own scene. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll teach you how to do the silhouette. You can add as many as you want or just switch them around as you like. So I thought that was nice too, that it was definitely customizable. You can make the dock nice and big if you need it to be nice and big. <laughs> so we can try that. Awesome. It sounds like you're all a fan, so that's very good. If anyone has any more opinions, you can shout them out or you can private message whatever you like. But I'm sure we can customize with everybody too with uh, what everybody wants to do. So. That's good as well. 
And then was there one more thing I wanted to? Add? Oh, oh yeah, we were going to talk about Sunday. What time we want to paint on Sunday? Because uh, I haven't, yeah, I haven't chosen when we're painting on Sunday quite yet. Yeah, exactly, Dorothy. Yeah, a lot of people are saying dogs and pets and stuff. Exactly, you can do anything like that. How about this? How about I'll uh, start my little introduction for those who are new. We can learn about what we're doing today. And then we can talk about maybe a Sunday time to paint. Because I want to figure out uh, what the best time to paint on Sunday is. That's true, Ariel. Oh, you're right, Ariel Rose. I did say that too, that maybe we could do it not on the Sunday. We can grab opinions on that one too. I was thinking it would be a nice Father's Day activity, but um, we can do we can do a few votes here. <laughs> I'll try my best to keep track of everyone's answers. Okay, so I'll do my intro and then we can talk more about Sunday. Yeah, I see a few coming in. Yeah, I want times, I want times. I see afternoons, I see evening. I'll ask you a few times, okay, and then we can all talk about it a little bit. But for now, let's welcome everybody to my live stream. Hello, hi Facebook Live, hi Twitch. Um, so I'm Erin of Erin Bun Paints. The idea today is I'll be teaching you step by step how to paint this painting that I created here. You know why this is so high? Because I raised it up earlier. That's why. Uh, so this painting, once again, it's nameless. We can maybe all name it together. Uh, but yeah, it's a nice just uh, Rocky Mountain type scene. Again, another request from all the audience here. Everyone said we want to do Alberta type mountains. And uh, I really took that into account and went straight Lake Louise with it. I looked up some Lake Louise photos for inspiration. Bob Ross came as inspiration for these lovely trees in the foreground. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today, a nice step-by-step -step painting. So uh, the materials I'll be using in case you're painting along with me today, I use five different colors. So I use white, black, red, yellow, and phthalo blue. So that's five total. It's like the primary colors plus black and white. And then I also have some paint brushes beside me. I always stick with just three. And you can switch these up, obviously, if you need to. I usually use a flat, a large flat brush, a medium round brush, and a small round brush. So that's my three that I use. You can switch them up as you need. And then otherwise, I have a cup of water. You can see I'm wearing an apron. I have a towel. And that's pretty much it in terms of materials. I have my canvas. My canvas is 16 by 20, in case anyone is wondering the size. but. All of these paintings are very, again, customizable. You can really do them on any uh, size of canvas you want. Any any surface, people do rocks, people do t-shirts, people paint on themselves. You can do whatever you want, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Yeah, Alberta Rockies would be a nice, nice name. That's pretty much what everyone requested anyway, Alberta Mountains, Alberta Rockies. So I could just name it that, nice and simplistic. Anyway. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do our toast and then we will start off with painting. So if you're having a little drink tonight, I'm just having my usual water, but whatever you're drinking, maybe you're snacking, you can grab that or grab your paintbrush, raise your paintbrush, and uh, I'm going to do a toast for you, okay? So here we go, ready? A toast from coast to coast to painting and not complaining to Bob, the total heartthrob, to you and Thalo Blue and to me for willing to see the fun of painting after a cheers or two or three. So cheers everybody, clink, there we go. Awesome, and that starts us off. Okay, so I'll teach the first step and then we can talk a little more about Sunday time and Father's Day painting time, etc. Still a little high up, huh? Okay, so I'll move this back here as usual. I did a little switching around with my setup, so that's why things are a little off kilter today. Just a little bit. Not too bad. Come on down. There we go. Alright guys, so first step is I'm going to be using my large flat brush. And I'll be mixing together some blue and white. So I'm starting with a pretty light blue. I would say it's not the lightest blue ever, but it is more on the light side. So let's bring out ooh, volcano plate over here. Gonna pour some white on the plate. Sarah, yes for sure. You can use any blue, that's totally fine. No worries. Thanks, Robin. Yeah. I just name what I'm using in case anybody's uh interested, because I know a lot of people like to grab exactly what I'm using, but 
if you're doing something different, that's totally fine, or using something different, that's totally fine. All right, so I've got, where'd it go? White and blue here on volcano plate. Uh, just mixing together again a little bit of blue into a large pile of white. Going for more of a nice light colored sky today, nice light sky blue. My paintings out of the way, keep them safe. Now that I know you all like them, <laughs> I can keep them a little safer. And I would say I'm bringing this just above halfway just to be very safe. So I'll have mountains kind of coming up here, but just to make sure there's no gaps in between the mountains, I want to bring this uh, light blue down, I would say again, about just above halfway. So if halfway's here, I'm going just above there. I'm going to be stroking left and right back and forth with my light blue. You can start on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. I won't be blending anything here, so just putting on this regular color of light blue and filling up that whole top area there that I marked off. Nice and simple. So again, no blending required. I'm going to throw some clouds up in the sky later on, but for now, just a nice light blue. Okay, so let's have a look at what people were saying about Sunday while I paint this here. So yeah, afternoon, afternoon, about 7, evening. Any rugged coastlines? Oh, 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 um, Michelle, if you want to send me any photos of lighthouses for inspiration, feel free. I know Lighthouse has been a big request recently, so if you have any nice photos of a lighthouse or even like during a sunset or just anything with some nice pretty colors, that would be awesome. Otherwise, I'm sure I could just use your photo as inspiration and kind of make up my own background, my own scenery. But yeah, I love receiving photos for inspiration. That way, that way I know it's coming straight from you guys and it's something that I know you guys like rather than me just kind of aimlessly searching and yeah. But definitely, Michelle, if you want to send those over, feel free. Oh, and people love your idea. There you go. Okay, 2 or 3, 1 p.m. So I think this is the debate on Sunday, and any day, really. I'm always like, do I start at, on the weekend, I guess I should say, do I start at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., or do I start at 6 p.m., 7 p.m.? Not really 6 p.m. I feel like that's dinner hour for most, but 7 p.m., because the thing is, I think a lot of you like to paint as a family with uh, your younger ones, and I understand that maybe they go to bed around, you know, six or seven, maybe seven, I guess. Excuse me, I don't have children, so I don't know. Um, I think it's around seven, because I know I've done events at seven before, and people say that's right around bedtime. Uh, so yeah, I'm curious to hear if you think one of those two would be better, like a one or two p.m. start time versus a seven p.m. start time. I was even debating with 4 p.m. because that way it's a little later in the day and we'd be finishing up like just before dinner time and then that way we're getting the best of both worlds. We have a little later in the day for those who are maybe busy during the day or want to be outside most of the day uh, but also the kids can join and if it's closer to 4 p.m. I would think. So let's pose that question. How do people feel about 4 p.m. on Sunday? Keeping it simple. Uh, how can you brighten if it looks a bit gray? Probably just a little more blue depth. Uh, sometimes the type of blue you're using can affect how uh, bright or dull your blue is becoming. Uh, so that's why I use phthalo blue is because it is very nice and bright when I mix it with just even just white. Uh, if you're using something a little different. I know for example like when I use ultramarine blue it looks totally different than this. It looks more of like a dull down blue. So that might be what you're seeing, but try just adding a little more blue to it. That might help. Ah, okay, Sarah, I gotcha. Oh, and you know what? I'm not even thinking of the right painting. I was thinking of that for the fish painting, that's why. I was thinking the fish painting was more of a family-oriented painting, so I wasn't sure if uh, people wanted their kids to be around for that one or not. I gotcha, Sarah, though. <laughs> That's okay, Tracy. So yeah, it was just uh, lots of white with a little bit of blue. Nothing crazy so far. Just a nice regular light blue. We'll be getting to the teals later on. Actually, like next. We're doing that next. I'll give everyone a minute or two just because I asked that Sunday question. It sounds like some of you joined a little late there, so all good. 
So what a no, I am asking about fishies. I'm getting so confused, guys. Confused. So the fish painting is on Sunday. Fish painting is Sunday, and I think that will be a kid-friendly, you know, family time one. Yeah, no worries, Tracy. So that's why I was thinking more like 4 p.m. or early afternoon. But if I hear an overwhelming majority saying, no, 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 I like that me time, I want it later, then I have no problem doing it later. I just want to do whatever you guys want, so... <laughs> I can even run an official poll on the page. I figured out how to run polls, by the way. I should have done that this morning, but I didn't. <laughs> it's not really my fault. Facebook hid the option from me, but I found out where the option is, and I could always run an official poll just to keep it a little more, yeah, organized official, rather than having you guys answer me right now while you're in the middle of painting. So maybe we can do that too. But just think about that, yeah. And it looks like the reactions aren't working, so whenever you guys are ready to move on, if you want to throw a few thumbs in the comments section, or just let me know in the comments when you're ready to move on, uh, I can uh, have a look at those and, uh, yeah, adjust as needed. I don't want to try opening up the stream on another device in fear of it totally crashing the whole thing again, so. Anyways. I'll leave a quick minute just to see how everyone's doing. There we go. There we go. Thanks, guys. Got some thumbs. Excellent. All right, so let's move on to the nice water here. So the water's more of a teal color, just like Lake Louise. For real, it's a real color of the water. It's so crazy. I feel like people who've never been are like, oh, those photos are doctored or, you know, they brightened up the color. This is the for real color of the water. It's so, so pretty. So we're gonna make this nice teal color. You can see I did a little bit of a gradient. I started it a little bit darker up here. And then what I did is I blended it down into more of just a nice light uh, kind of teal turquoise for you. Thanks for the thumbs, guys. So yeah, I'm gonna do the nice darker one and then we're gonna quickly transition to a light one for the whole way down here. So what you can do is wash off your large flat brush, wash her off in that cup of water. mix that blue together. So again, remember, we're starting just a little bit darker at the top, and then we'll quickly make a lighter teal to come all the way down with, okay? So for this color, what we're doing is we're mixing white and blue again. The only difference is we are now mixing a little bit of yellow in there. The yellow is what's going to turn this a little more of that kind of turquoise teal color. And again, I'm starting a little darker because I want to do that nice kind of dark water line right along the top to begin with and then we're gonna blend it down into a lighter teal after. All right, so you can uh, place this wherever you want your waterline to begin. I would say mine's a little lower than halfway, so I'm gonna have a little bit of a gap here, gap of white, but we're gonna cover that with mountains, of course, later. So choose where you want your water to start. Try your best to do a straight line across. If it's a little wiggly, that's totally fine. There we go. Oh, see mine's a little slanted, that's cool. <laughs> that happens when you're looking from the side. But see how it's just a little bit darker. So this kind of darker teal, I would call this a darker teal. I'm only doing a little bit, so if you have a large flat brush, I would say it's about the width of a nice large flat brush. Uh, if you're using fingers like I usually do to measure, it's like two fingers worth-ish. If you like the darker teal, of course, you can move it further down, but I'm just going to keep it a little higher up, just at the very tip top of my water there. That works for me. So I'll just give a quick minute. Don't worry about doing thumbs. I'll just move right along in about a minute to half a minute here, just because I'm sure that's a quicker step for everybody. reload my plate in preparation for that because I'm already out of white. All right. Hey, the reaction.
actions are working, you guys. I just opened up my laptop, and they are working. <gasps> Feel free to send those. Yay! Feel free to use the little hearts and thumbs ups as you wish. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Small wins. All right, so let's go down into the rest of the water here. So as I said, the rest of the water is more of a light teal color. So all I'm going to do is mix more white into my existing teal, and you can see it just lightens it right up. So you can mix lots of this because we have lots of area to cover here. So again, feel free, you guys, on Facebook Live if you need to use those little thumbs up reactions, the quick little reactions or hearts, go right ahead. I now have it working. All right, so everybody, I'm taking that light teal color. See how light it is compared to my previous? I'm just going to put that right below that darker teal. And I will actually blend it immediately just because we have lots of area to cover and I want to make sure that I'm blending as my first teal is still a little bit wet. So for those who need a little instruction on blending, whoops, all I'm doing is I'm grabbing my brush after I have removed most of the paint from it. See how there's barely any paint left on it? And once I have a semi-clean brush, I'm just moving my brush in between those two colors. So in between that medium teal and the light teal, and you can see what happens is it blends the two together. So you get more of a smooth transition in between those two colors, just like you saw in my original painting there, how it kind of just fades down. That's what I was going for. So once I'm done blending, I can start to add that color all the way down, just the same as usual. I'm going to actually make mine a little different. I'm making mine a little more green. There we go. More of that teal. Yes, there we go. Good, good, good. So acrylic paint, guys, if you don't know, you can always add right on top as long as it's still wet. So that's what I was doing there. I was not really a fan of my color. I wanted it a little more of that green teal spectrum. So. I remixed the color on my plate and I just popped it right on top of what was already on the canvas and you can see it just blended in nicely. Nobody knows what was underneath anymore and I have a new color here. I have more of that green teal that I was trying to match to that background there. So there you go. So keep that in mind. If you ever need to change anything, go for it. You really should. That way you know you like your painting and you get the colors you want. Hey mocap, thanks for joining in again. Mocap, this is a painting tutorial. So I've got most people on Facebook Live right now. I've got a few of you on Twitch probably just watching along. Maybe you're painting, I don't know. But Facebook Live is painting with me. That's why I have my one camera set up today. Okay, everybody, I'm just moving that color down, down, down. Doing some nice back and forth strokes as usual. If you want to make it kind of streaky, you can. I try to keep it relatively the same color all the way down. But if you like things like little white streaks in your water, you can just grab some white and kind of sweep it across. Grab some darker teal, sweep it across, whatever you need to do. If anyone needs help with that, you can let me know. All the way down. Again, just to be safe. Even though there's some areas of coverage, we just want to make sure we have a nice even coat of this color. So I'm going to go all the way down. Yeah, and I wasn't kidding when I said mix a lot of this color. I'm even running out here and trying to scrape that last little bit. Really rubbing my brush to get every little bit of paint off. I think I've said it before. I know we're all trying to save paint right now to make sure we're not running out. Even though things seem to be opening up, I think a lot of people are out of stock of things right now, so I know I've been really trying to save my paint. There we go, I managed. Alright, so I brought it all the way down. Have a good look there. I'll give everybody a minute or two at least just to make sure everything's nice and covered there. And again, feel free to use those little reactions, those little thumbs and hearts whenever you're ready. I guess thumbs are the answer for moving on, so you can do that whenever you're ready. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, let's say that I'll, I'll throw up a poll on Facebook maybe tomorrow, okay? 
So if anyone wants to contribute to the poll of uh, what time to paint on Sunday, you can look for that tomorrow on the Facebook page. Just to make sure everyone has a chance to give their opinions there. That's okay, Barb. Oh yes, it will be on YouTube. If you want to hang out in the meantime, you're more than welcome to, but it will be on YouTube as soon as I can afterwards, yes. Usually a couple hours later, so unless you want to do a super late night painting, you might want to wait till tomorrow, but then it'll be up uh, indefinitely, so there you go. Lori's ready to go. We got a thumbs up from Lori. Wait for maybe a couple more, just because that was quite the big area there. I want to make sure everyone's caught up. We're going to go right into the mountains next, guys. Your blue doesn't have to be totally dry. It can be a little bit sticky. I know mine is. It's not completely dry. But we're using gray, so we can put it kind of right on top without any issue. I think I'll give at least another minute just in case. I'm not seeing many other thumbs here. Lori, you're a fast painter. Got one or two there. There's a lot of you tonight, so I'll wait for a few more. Floating around 60, 70 of you right now, so just want to be sure we're on the same page. Got lots of time. But yeah, Barb, check out the YouTube page. You can paint any of the past ones on YouTube as well. I hope you guys are still continuing to enjoy those. I think you are. There's another thumb or two. Awesome! Okay, thanks guys. Alright, alright. Okay, let's go to the mountains. Mountains are calling, let's go. So we've got a nice light gray as our base for the mountains, so we're going to start with our light gray, and then what we're going to do is we're going to let it dry, and then we'll revisit the mountains later and add our little snow caps and kind of our purple shading to really give them uh, the nice shape that you see there. So we're going to, again, go with a light gray, so we can do some white and black. We want to do mostly white, whoops, with a little bit of black. So if you're out of white like I am, you can just reload your plate. So again, I'm sticking to more of a light gray. I would call this more of a light gray, maybe medium gray. But either way, I definitely used more white than I did black. And you can use whatever brush you're comfortable with. I believe I actually did switch to the medium size brush for this, just so I could get some nice tips on the mountains and kind of use my brush just slowly, yeah, rather than the nice big brush. So use whatever brush you're comfortable with. I'm going to switch down to this nice medium size brush. So I'm grabbing just a little bit of black, large pile of white, mixing that together. And again, make whatever mountain color you want to. If you want some like darker mountains, if you want really, really light mountains, you can of course switch up the shade of this gray. Yeah, I'd say this is light to medium light to medium, anywhere in there. Something like that. All right, and what I wanted to do, or at least what I did when I was painting, is I did the top part of the mountains first, and then I concentrated on kind of evening out this uh, water line here with some gray, and then I just filled them in. You can do whatever order you want. It doesn't matter if you start at the top or the bottom. Either one works. So I'm just going to start anywhere in the sky. I'm going to start by doing a nice angle, kind of coming up, and then immediately down. We're just kind of stacking triangles all next to one another. You can see I like to dip them down and then up. That was, again, inspiration straight from Lake Louise, how it kind of dips down and then dips back up. No worries, Sue. I'm glad you made it to the party. So again, I've done one triangle. I'm going to just start another one anywhere I want. You can start it you know, in and amongst your other triangle if you want. I'll go up and then I'll do a quick down. You can change the angles too. You can make them a little wider at the tops or a little kind of taller, sharper. I do a little bit of both. I don't vary them a whole lot, but just a little here and there. So there's another one peeking in. I did more of a wide one, I would say, kind of in the middle here. So the angle is wider, right? I'm kind of spreading this out a little more versus keeping these two lines a little closer in. Just gives you a little bit of variety to your mountain range, so I would suggest kind of playing around with that. You can see it kind of fills up the middle a little bit better when it's a little wider, I think. 
And then I just start to make my way back up. So I'm doing a few more triangles. And keeping them all nice and tight together. So I've got one there. I'll do another one just very close by. Try not to make it symmetrical, but it's kind of turning out symmetrical. So let's stop that. <laughs> make this guy much taller and then it's going to offset the other side. Try to avoid symmetry when I'm doing nature things, except for flowers of course, but things like mountains, hills, landscapes. I'm good, Eric, thanks, how are you? Good morning vibes, yeah. I'm going to do a nice tall one coming up here. And then it looks like I end off with just one more kind of peeking off the side here. I didn't quite do the last tip there. I just uh, moved it off to the edge. So again, you do not have to copy the exact mountain range I did. You can just kind of use that technique, use those little triangles, arrange your mountains however you want. I'm just kind of cleaning up some of the tips here. Some of the tips were a little shaky or round for my liking. I kind of round the tips a little bit, but for the most part, I would say you want them to be pretty, pretty sharp. Again, just a little rounded. Of course, there are mountains that have more of a rounded tip. It's a little more of like a dome, so you could definitely use that and uh, change that up in your painting if you wish. But I'm trying my best to make it pretty sharp on the tops. Maybe there's just a little bit of a curve there. So take your time. Point is, whenever you're done with your top edge there, you can just now use the gray to really clean up your bottom edge. So you can use the gray to go right on top of your dark teal, just to really clean it up and make sure there's no gaps. So I'm just going to carefully and slowly move along here with my gray. Again, it definitely helps if you're painting to be looking straight at the canvas. It's a little challenging for me, so I'm going to move this like this so I can get a nice straight on view. Trying to make it as straight and horizontal as possible. It's never going to be absolutely perfect, but try your best. It's nice to have some clean lines for sure. I think I'll clean up my mountains too while I'm looking at this because all of them are slanted because I was looking from the side. So I'm just kind of evening out the edges a little bit. I think my edges were a little angled funny just because I was looking from the other side. There we go, that one's better. Try not to worry about it too much. go. Okay, and then whenever you've got all that hard work done of doing the nice kind of top outline, that bottom edge, all you need to do is fill it in all with gray. You don't need to worry about sectioning off the mountains quite yet. We're going to do that later with our white, and we have some purple to do that with, but for now we're literally just filling them in with gray. So taking nice big scoops of your gray color, your medium to light gray, putting that everywhere. Woo! A little flick there, putting that everywhere in and amongst your mountain range just to cover that all up. Need more of a splatter zone over here, apparently. Oh boy. So using lots of paint really helps with this. It just helps really smooth everything out, making sure you can cover up any of the blue that might be behind there. If you're really scraping the paint along, you might see some blue kind of showing through. I'm trying to demonstrate, see like that, it kind of shows through the paint color. So just keep reloading your brush, kind of crushing it up. Crushing it up. And using lots of paint doesn't necessarily mean you need to leave blobs behind, right? You can of course be using lots of paint and smoothing it out. So just make sure you're smoothing it out as you go. So using nice big strokes really helps with that. Using a bigger brush also helps with that. So if you do want to switch to a nice large brush to really smooth out all of your paint, you can definitely do that. I'm just going to keep using the medium size. It's doing fine for me. 
I'm just making sure, again, you can see to do nice large strokes back and forth. That helps keep everything nice and smooth and even as well. You can see it helps kind of mix all the grays together, keeps it all pretty consistent. And again, even if your blue was a little bit sticky, a little bit wet, the gray should go on top just fine. And again, just, just keep adding more paint. That should be fine. Or you can give it an extra minute or two, give it a little hair dryer action. I know some of you are saying that you've incorporated some hair dryers into your art stations, which I think is so, so funny. So, so smart as well. Chantelle, yes, I can relate. Chantelle said the last painting she did, she splattered on her laptop. Oh yeah, I think I've said before, any, any electronic device I have around me has had quite the splatter before, especially my phone. Sometimes my phone, if I'm painting somewhere else, like on a table, I'll put my phone kind of below my tabletop easel and it just gets totally clobbered. Like, I don't even know why I keep my phone around while I'm painting, because it's just a disaster every time. But not to worry. Acrylic paint I have found to be very easy to take off of screens and stuff. You just kind of scrape it off with your thumbnail. It's all water-based as well, so you could kind of wipe it down a little bit, and then it just kind of dissolves as you wipe it. I just pick it off, though. I just kind of scrape it off. It's kind of satisfying, actually. Do a nice little scrape action. Okay. So I could, I could really perfect these, but honestly, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to concentrate more on how you guys are doing. So I'm sure my mountains are a little bit sloppy. I can definitely see some more round tops a little bit. I see some kind of tilting a little bit, but I'm also sure that they'll be fixed up a little bit once we add all of our nice shading and highlights, our nice snow caps as well. So I'm not going to worry too much about it for now. So again, feel free to throw some thumbs ups whenever you're ready. And uh, we can move right along here. We got a few coming already. That's great. You guys are quick as usual. Hey, Amy, I see you just joined in. Having a little peek. I don't know if you're painting this today or you're going to paint it later. I responded to you on Instagram, too. We're doing the canoe last. <laughs> so you got to hang around if you want to see the little canoe. All right, thanks for the thumbs, guys. All right, so the next step is I'm going to be doing some greenery here. So I'm going to start with my, I would call them background trees. So we have, bring these forward here. Well, balancing my plate, oh my goodness. Okay, so we have our nice background trees here. They're very simple. Uh, I'm not putting any detail in them whatsoever. I just do my base of gray, and then I do a darker gray, just kind of at the bases base of gray and then I do a base. Uh, good good job. Uh, but yeah, it is the green first and then I do the dark green on top. It just gives it a little shading down here. It kind of makes it look a little more like the trunks are maybe showing through right at the base here, right at the bottom. So I did that just as my detail, but that's really the only detail I did. Otherwise, this is just going to be using a forest green. I use my medium sized brush and I kind of flick upwards just to get my treetops going. Otherwise, really just filling it in. So. That's those ones. We'll be dealing with these more Bob Ross-esque ones later. So what we can start with is a nice forest green. So again, we're doing the lighter of the two greens. We're starting with the more, uh, again, I would call it forest green, and then we're doing an even darker green after that. I don't know what to call a dark green other than super dark green. So let's call it that. We'll do super dark green after. For now, we're just doing a nice regular forest green. So I'm using blue and yellow, mixing those together. So you can see mine turns out pretty dark to begin with. Blue and yellow. And just to make it a little more of that kind of earthy tone forest green, I did add a smidgen of black even to our first green color here. So even though it looks a little bright on the painting there, I added just a little black. I found again that made it a little more of that foresty kind of nature tone rather than a really bright green. It depends, again, what blue you're using, but when I'm using phthalo blue, it always produces a very, very bright green. Almost unrealistic. So I like to dim it down with a little bit of black. See, it's a little more mossy, kind of foresty green. Okay. And I'm gonna carve out where I wanna put my trees first, and then I'll put the actual trees on. So just from the perspective I had, we had some trees kind of coming in and out of the lake. 
So I'm going to start anywhere just near the tops, or bottoms of my mountains rather, not quite the tops, that's the bottom. So I'm on the right hand side just above the top. I'm just going to very roughly sketch out where I want my trees, so I'm just kind of bringing an angled line down and in to start. Not too far in, I want lots of lake space in my lake, so I don't want to cover up too much. Okay, and then I went backwards again, I kind of went back over there, so a nice angled line down. And then I brought it back out a bit. You can change the angles too. You don't need to do the exact same angle of line each time. If you want to change it up a little bit, you certainly can. And I think I did a quick little, like two little points and then maybe came back down here. Again, you can change this up as you want. You're just kind of making a nice, uh, yeah, a little piece of land coming in from the right hand side. So it could be any, any angles you want, any shape you want as many or as few points that you want. It's all up to you. It's all your painting. And I think I'll just sketch out this other side too while I have that going. So I just did a quick little smaller little point I would say coming out this way. So coming out from that left hand side over to the right and then moving back the other way. I'm just going to check if I have any hiding behind my tree. No, I don't. Cool. So it's really just that one point on the other side. You can see we throw a big tree on the left, but it looks like I didn't even do anything over there anyway. So I'm just going to stick with the one point for the left hand side. <laughs> Dorothy relates to you, Chantel. <laughs> I'm sure we all do. I'm sure we've all done a little bit of splattering in our time, so it's all good again. It's really good we're using acrylic paint. Very, very good. All right, once you have it carved out, you can just fill these in. I did like to fill them in specifically with some vertical strokes. Even though I'm not, you know, doing any shapes quite yet, you still might see some brush strokes after this dries. So I find that using some vertical strokes adds a little bit of texture and gives therefore a little bit more detail to your trees, right? Even though you're not doing a whole lot of work here, you're not actually shaping out trees and adding branches, you're still doing those vertical strokes to show that there are some nice tall objects in there. So I'm doing that to fill in. And then of course what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be extending some of those lines just above my shape here to give some little treetops. So rather than having a straight edge, I now have lots of little points popping up for my nice tall trees. So all I'm doing is I'm grabbing my same green paint, I'm just using the tip of my brush. This is still that medium round brush and just kind of flicking. You can kind of flick your bristles up, moving the handle down as you go. And then that way the bristles literally flick right off like that. And you can kind of control if you want some shorter flicks, you can go a little slower, you can do a big fast large one here and there. So I kind of, you can see angle them down, but maybe there's one or two trees really peeking up there, really reaching nice and tall. So feel free to throw a few of those guys in there. Okay, so that's the one side and I'm doing the exact same thing to the other side, just grabbing more of my green, my nice forest green that I made which again, if anyone needed a reminder, that was blue, yellow, and a tiny, tiny bit of black. And again, I find it easier just to fill in first. Just doing lots of my vertical strokes to fill in. Because again, it does add some texture. You will be able to see some of those strokes come through even after the paint dries. So I do recommend doing this something as small you can do while you're painting, it really makes a nice big difference in there, rather than smoothing it all out and making it look smooth in the middles, right? And your medium sized brush doesn't have to be a round one. This would work just as well with a nice flat brush. You would just use the thin edge of the brush and use that going up to down or down to up. Either one works. Filling her in. Hope everyone's liking it so far.
How can you not with this nice, beautiful color? I just love that teal. It's just so cool. It's a real color in nature, too. It's not a totally man-made color. It's like, you can see this if you go to that lake, go to that area. And lots of other places in the world, too, I'm sure. But that's what I think of when I see this color is Lake Louise, for sure. Okay, so again, you can kind of see that texture in there. Definitely when I hold it up to the light, you can even see where I've outlined, right? So you can even take that and kind of move that up and down. And then that way it gets rid of that outline a little more. So if you're seeing a little ridge with your paint where you outlined, just use your brush and bring it up a little bit. Allow it to meet with the middle. And that'll help cover that up. And I'm just going to continue adding my little treetops, everybody, so nothing new here. I'm just going along any top edge, I guess I should say that. Of course, we're not going to do any uh, spikes coming down here. It's only the top edges, so I'm going to go along this top edge here. Just using that tip of my brush, kind of flicking around. And I like to go from down to up, as you see, but I know some people would rather stay on the top and move down. You can do that too. I like flicking upwards though, as I find it creates just softer tops, a little bit sharper tops as well, because you're literally flicking the bristles up and off, right? They're kind of floating off as you go, and I think that does create a thinner tip, at least when I'm doing it, that's what I find. But to each their own, everyone has their own techniques of course so please feel free to do that do whatever's working for you even if it's using a different brush for this step or whatever okay so i've added those i'm just going to keep moving along here going along just again any top edge so this top edge and then that top edge and that'll be it So just continuing to load my brush again, it's important to keep loading it up and then that way you have fresh paint on there to get some nice clean edges. Again, if you're really trying to scrape the paint off, you'll get very transparent and rough looking strokes. So just keep reloading. That'll help you get some nice uh, clean edges, clean tips of your trees. So that's that edge. We're going to go along this last edge here. Same thing. Need to grab a little more paint. There we go. Just going to make sure I've got all my spots covered. I think I want to make this a little more of a tip here. It's a little round for my liking. So you can see how easy it is to alter. You can just take a little more green, bring it out a little bit more. If something looked a little wonky at the very end, just bring it out a little more. Try again. There we go. I think that's a little better. I don't even do anything to these shorelines here. I literally just leave them be. I think they're just fine the way they are. Okay, so I'll give everyone, as usual, a minute or two just to show those little thumbs whenever you're ready. We still have one more step to do with the trees, of course, so I pointed out earlier I do some very dark green just at the bases to give some shading, so we still have time to work on those trees. So do not worry, if you still want to work on them, you will be working on them still. I'll bring this forward if you want to see. You can see we're getting most of the base down right now. So again, this is what we'll be working on next are these nice dark strokes in here. I know this looks pretty dark, but when you sh bring it forward, I'm sure you'll see it's not quite as dark. Or maybe not. Maybe the lighting's not going to do it justice today. It's fine. As long as I can make a slightly darker green, I'll be fine. No thumbs so far, I'll keep waiting here. You can take your time. <clears throat> Always get to take your time when you're painting, not rush yourself. 
Maybe I did make the screen a little bit darker. It really doesn't look that dark to me though. I think it's just not picking up right on the camera. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Saw one little thumb come up. One lowly thumb. Got a very painty thumb today. Already, what's new? Oh, I got paint in my mouth today when I was streaming on Twitch. That was a mess. <laughs> As you guys saw, I like to put my brush in my mouth sometimes when I'm busy doing other things. There was paint on it, it went ah! And it just went all over here. It was not fun. <laughs> my green wasn't dark enough. Oh, okay, Chantel, so you can easily just stroke in some darker green on top, or you can even wait till we put on this dark green as our next step and see how you like it. Maybe you'll like it with the nice contrast. Thanks, Mary. Really appreciate it. Okay, we've got a thumbs up from Lori. Kathy, what size brushes you use? Is the big one larger than an inch? Oh my goodness. I'm not good with inches. I'm so sorry, Kathy. Can I give you fingers? <laughs> Can I show you via my fingers how wide it is? So it's about, see how it covers up like a finger and a half? I'm so sorry, this is not the best. <laughs> finger and a half. I can even give you the exact brush if you want, if that helps you, like an actual brush size. They get numbered from like one to 10, I think, or just one, two, three, four, five, etc. Give me a second, Kathy, and I'll grab that for you. Oh yeah, Sarah, it's all just for fun. And I think you'll see a big difference when we add some foreground elements too, but that's just usually how it goes. But you let me know if you have any questions, but of course they're always going to look a little different. Okay, so I saw some thumbs. So what I'm doing everybody is I'm just grabbing my medium sized brush and I'm just grabbing a little more black, throwing that into my green so it's turning into a very, very dark green now. It's like borderline black, just not quite. So I put again that black on top of my previous green. And I'm hoping the camera will show this. Not sure, because it's not really picking up my green very nicely, but all I'm doing is I'm doing some more flicks just near the base of my green now. So any bottom edge, I know you can see the strokes. I don't know. Oh, there we go. See, it just takes some angling. Throw in some of those dark greens down here. And then that way it looks like there's maybe some trunks down here. It just gives another little layer of green. You don't need to do a thick line of them. You can just kind of scatter them a little bit. You can see maybe I bring some a little further up here. Sorry for this angle, but I think it's helping there. There we go. So see that there? It's just kind of doing a nice little layer of very dark green right at the bottom. So following along that ledge there. And I did that here. I did that over here as well. Again, all it's doing is just giving another extra little layer to these very background trees. These trees, again, they get very covered up later on. We do some nice big, beautiful trees in the foreground after, so this is really just the, uh, the background there. Oh, Kimberly, it's okay. So Kimberly, I'll be posting this on uh, YouTube as usual, so you can always watch there. If you want to hang out in the meantime, feel free. But no worries, I totally understand. Life escapes us sometimes. You can always watch later. Thanks for commenting though. Yeah, Kathy, I'll get that for you right when I'm done this step. I'll give everyone a minute or two and I'll quickly go to Amazon and find that brush set for you. I should almost just pin it in that description at this point because I know a lot of people wonder which brushes I use, the exact brushes. Because I can really vouch for them. These have lasted me a long time. And I think it's a nice value pack as well. It's not too expensive. You get five brushes. So it's a nice nice variety in my opinion. And I, you know, I just use three. <laughs> I use three out of five. So if you get the five pack, you have some extras that you can play around with. Okay, and again, you can see I added to this bottom edge here. So any bottom edge, you can kind of see what's going on. I kind of 
put them right around the edge and then move them up a little bit into the forest just to give a little bit of darkness. Yeah, you're welcome, Kathy. So again, you can't really see it there. I don't know why it's not picking up correctly, but it was picking up on my other one. <laughs> but again, if I tilt it, I think you can see a little bit better there. Yeah. So you can keep working on that. I'm just gonna get those, those brushes for Kathy here, as long as my computer doesn't completely crash by opening up a new window. <laughs> hoping it doesn't slow the whole thing down. Let's see. I hope it did slow it down. Oh dear. Interrupted. Oh, it's interrupting. Oh boy. Come on. There it is, there it is. Test, test, test. Yeah, it's getting better. Okay. Kathy. I'm going to give you the direct link. It was just really slowing down my stream as I was searching on Amazon, so maybe you can click that link and have a look whenever you're ready. And uh, I used the first three brushes in that set. Okay? I just threw it in there. It's a direct link to the exact value set that I have. The value... Real value brush set, yeah. Yeah, it's going better. Okay. And you can see the first three brushes there, so it should show you uh, the sizes in terms of the numbers. I think it's like 135 or 136 or something like that. But have a look whenever you're ready. Seeing a couple thumbs already, which is good. Wait for a couple more and then we're good. You're very welcome. You know what was in? Oh yeah, I use eight different brushes for every painting yet. I mean, if you have them, you might as well use them. I obtained a fan brush recently for my birthday. I still haven't used that. And I think it's all habit, right? It's just because I'm used to using three regularly, and then I just uh, never really go for any others. But I'm going to try my best to maybe use that fan brush for another painting. Because I think it would be really fun to use. I was thinking maybe I'd follow along with the Bob Ross painting for the first time ever to see how that goes. I'll let you guys know if I do that. Alright, we got a few thumbs, so let's go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead to do some clouds, just to really make sure we're leaving lots of time for our gray to dry. So we'll do the clouds, and then we'll go on top of the gray with our nice white caps and our purple, okay? So the clouds, for those who would join me, it's a very similar technique to what I usually use. I'm just going to be using this medium-sized brush using some white paint on here and I'm doing a dry brushing technique so I'm wiping off the white a little bit on a towel or a paper towel or your apron or whatever you're wearing so you can see my bristles are now very lightly coated I don't have a full blob of paint anywhere they're just very lightly coated and I'm gonna do some very soft clouds I chose just to do very like short clouds in terms of height they're very long in terms of length so very wispy looking and all I'm doing is I'm using the kind of edge of the brush or the tip of the brush doing some little swirls so I'm moving my brush in a circular motion like that and I kind of swirl up a little higher as I get more to the middle of the cloud swirl a little lower on the side and then do a little bit of brushing on the bottom just to help wisp it out so you can see very wispy, very long looking clouds. I'm not worried about making them totally big and fluffy. Yeah, I think you've said that before, Anna, and I, uh, I need to look up how to use it, because I can't even imagine how to do it. 
Like I'm picturing them more for the trees. Like when I do these trees, for example, that would be fan brush territory for me. But like, yeah, what? How do you use it? Are you tapping it? Or are you? Anyway, I'll look it up, or you can tell me whenever you have time. But no rush if you're painting. Obviously, concentrate on that first. The palm trees. Maybe we'll do a fan brush palm tree painting. That would be cool. Now that I've obtained a fan brush. So again, little amounts of paint, swirling to get the tops of the clouds, and then brushing back and forth on the bottom, just kind of wisping it out. I'll do another cloud if you want to see. You can see I do a few, so I'll maybe throw one up here, just like my original. So again, using the tip of the brush, doing some little small circles, making sure there's not a lot of paint on the brush. So again, I would tap it off a little bit just to make sure there's not a lot of white paint on there. And then I do my small little swirls. So I'm doing tight little circles, round and round. And I kind of bump them up a little higher as I get to the middle of the cloud. And then I come back down when I get to the sides here. And that's kind of the basic shape that I stick to when I'm making clouds. They have kind of taller middles and just shorter sides there just to make them a little wispier. And you can see I'm just kind of dragging my brush across, kind of wisping out that bottom a little bit. Makes it look like it's kind of blowing in the wind. Oh, hey, Mish. Oh, no worries, no worries. I'm having internet, weird internet things going on, too. I had to restart the stream at the start. <laughs> you a tech savvy? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All good. You know where to find me, YouTube. Yep, it's all good. Thanks for popping in to say hi. And I've got more coming this weekend, Mish, so don't worry, you're not really missing out. I've got two coming up this weekend. I've got one posted, and I'll be posting Sundays very soon, so you'll have lots of options this weekend if you want to paint live. Okay, let's do another cloud just in case you want to see. So you can obviously hide these behind the mounds, so just be a little more careful because you don't want to overlap. So I'm just going to go right to the edge here, starting with my little swirls. Bring the swirls down tighter, and then I'm going to wisp left and right. Again, trying to be careful not to wisp right on top of my mountain, just kind of wisping beside it. There we go. And just to mimic my painting, it looks like I did one more up here very lightly. So again, very lightly swirling my brush, tiny amounts of paint. Wisping left and right, trying to keep that tip open there. There we go. So you can see, I kept my sky pretty open. I only kept a few clouds right by the mountains there. I didn't want to fill up the whole thing. So if you want to add a few more, you certainly can. If you want to stop where I have, you can as well. But yeah, these clouds, I just wanted to keep a little wispier. Didn't want to draw attention to them at all. We have the mountains. We have this nice canoe that we'll be doing, all the nice big trees. So I felt like some very, very soft clouds were... Uh, Good to add for today. So once again, I'll wait for a thumbs up or two before I move ahead here. I think we'll be doing, yeah, we'll be doing the mountains next. <laughs> so I do use my brush for the mountains, guys, but I think I've talked about this before. You can use a variety of items. Maybe I'll talk about that in a little bit just to make sure we're all caught up first and I'm not, uh, Telling you all about it as you're still trying to concentrate and paint. nice big brush again. You can see I've got that all ready to go. Got one quick little thumb there. Mm -hmm. Couple coming in. Awesome. Thanks guys. Okay. All right. So for my mountains, again, I'm going to be using this nice large flat brush. And the main reason I'm using it is because it's flat. 
Okay, so I think it's good to be using a flat brush. Even if you have a smaller flat brush, I think that would be beneficial. Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be grabbing paint and I'm going to be kind of lightly dragging it, like dragging it right across the gray in hopes that you can see it kind of lays on thick, but also spotty. So it's not quite dry brushing. Maybe a little bit down here is more dry brushing, but you can see these kind of come off in blobs here. And we have some big spaces in between the blobs. So that's going to be my goal is I'm going to be using this brush going to be using some whites or purples and doing that and kind of kind of sketching out the sides of the mountains to really bring forward a few and then back a few. Oh yeah, Charlene, I saw your comments earlier too. Maybe we can add mermaids to the fishy painting. We'll see, that'll be Sunday. Uh, so let me think of the order here. I did, starting on this side, moving over this way. So I kind of lined up all my mountains. I think that each one beside it was more in the foreground. So this is going to be the most foreground one, then this, then this, then this. See how they all kind of stack behind each other? You can choose whichever ones are in the foreground by leaving those last. Um, so what you'd be doing is doing the shading, and then you're going to be doing the white, I guess, one at a time. Oops, the other way, one at a time. And keeping them, I guess, in front. But yeah, you can see if the shading goes on top of another mountain, that means this one's behind, this one's in front. Behind, in front. It kind of keeps coming down in front as you go, right? And, uh, oh yeah, and I was talking about other options here. So other options, if you don't have a large flat brush or you want to play around with a different thing to use, uh, you can use either a piece of card, like very stiff card, like cereal box card or even cardboard, that would work. Um, and then if you have a palette knife, if you're really fancy like Bob, he has this nice palette knife that he kind of scrapes around, you can do that as well. So if you want to experiment with how to do this technique, you certainly can. I'm just sticking to my brush just because I know that's what I uh, gave everybody in terms of supplies needed today, so I'm sure a lot of you are with me in terms of having a flat brush available. But again, if you want to have some fun and experiment with some things just kind of scraping along, you can use a lot of different things to scrape with. So feel free. Uh, but yeah, getting back to the actual step here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a nice dark purple. That's actually what this is here, is a nice dark purple. And I'm going to start with the shaded areas of the mountains, kind of put those on, and then what I did is I put the white on after, and then for the third step I went back with a little bit of purple just to give a little bit more spottiness to the white here. Okay? Okay. A bread tie? Is that what you use, Carol? Interesting. I've never heard that one before, but yeah, I guess that's stiff enough. Yeah, 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 that's true. Just use the little edge. Totally. I hope you're using that to see how that works. I'm curious. All right, so if you want to mix a nice purple with me, you'll be mixing blue and red. Blue and red. Huh, cool amazing what you can use when you really think about it. Again, anything with a nice like straight edge that's a little bit stiff. Again, even if it's like a little bit bendy, like card. Again, that's why I say card and not just plain like printer paper. I think that would be too, too flimsy. Oh, I need some red there. But yeah, you know. go. So red and blue, again that was red and blue to make a nice deep dark purple. Not adding any white to it because I want to keep it nice and dark. It's our nice shaded area of the mountain so we want it nice and dark. Deep dark purple, nice, nice, nice. All right. So again this is not dry brushing. We don't want to be wiping off our brush. We actually want lots of paint on here on the brush, I should say. So you can see I have a nice big, not big blob, I guess, but it is very heavily coated. You see how shiny it is, lots of paint on there. And the key is gonna be how we use the brush. We're just gonna be very, very lightly kind of grazing across. Yeah, business cards, exactly. Do I have one? Maybe I can demonstrate. I have a Kobo card. <laughs> you can use a, a gift card. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want. Anyway, maybe I'll try and use that for fun because I think that's out of money anyway. 
But here I'll go. I'll uh, teach with the brush first, of course. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to split them out in kind of in half, but I'm also bringing it down to the right. So I'm going to be bringing this uh, purple down to the right as I go. Um, I'll do this mountain first, but it'll be better to do these mountains next. Here we go. So I'm using the side of the brush here. So I'm kind of keeping it very tight to the canvas. You see how close it is there. And again, I'm not trying to go to the left-hand side. I'm trying to keep on the right-hand side. So you see how the edge is kind of bordering in the middle there. And that way I can move it down to the right. And what I'm doing is super lightly dragging it and almost kind of like trying to touch it up and down as I go. And that way you're getting all these nice little spaces in there, right? So you don't want it to be a harsh edge. You want it to be, again, kind of blobby, coming off on its own terms. You can kind of be lifting the brush off as you go. And you also don't have to make it a perfectly straight line in the middle. If anything, I like to mess it up a little bit. So I'm going to purposely go back and like do a little corner edge as I go, just to make it a little kind of spiky in there, right? Oh, thanks, Lisa. Of course, yep, check out YouTube. That'll be on in a few hours after this. But thanks very much. Just playing around in the shower, you know? Just quarantine things. I'll demonstrate again. I know that was kind of confusing and maybe a few steps at a time there. So I've re-grabbed some purple. I'm trying to keep this on the right-hand side of the mountain. Not necessarily, again, not necessarily straight down as you saw. You can kind of make it a little more jagged, so let's try and do that on purpose this time. So using the flat edge against it, very lightly dragging it down, and then kind of trying to lift as I go. I'm trying to lift it on and off a little bit, so I'm getting spaces in between. Because you want to avoid harsh strokes, I guess, like that, but you can easily kind of split that up with a few more little strokes around it. And I'm dragging it further down so that it looks like this mountain is now in front of that one, right? Because this one's going to be overlapping on the bottom. Uh, I guess I should mention too, you don't need to bring it all the way to the bottom. You can see I brought the shading down sometimes to the bottom, but sometimes it kind of stayed a little higher up. So maybe I'll bring this down a little further. But you can kind of trickle it down and it doesn't need to go all the way, right? Let's do it again. You can even use, uh, rather than using the whole flat edge, you can kind of choose more of a corner to use if you want. So I'm just using more of the corner. So rather than laying flat like this, I'm using just one corner. Same thing, trying to very, very lightly drag it, kind of lifting on and off as I go. So you can see I'm going down to the right and then I'm moving down the mountain, going back down to the right. And it is okay to have a little bit of dry brushing. You can see that happened a little bit there, and I think it adds a little bit of texture here and there. So hopefully you're seeing those mountains start to form, how each time you do a little bit of shading, it moves a mountain back and starts a new mountain, right? You're slowly just showing the viewer where those mountains are going, which ones are overlapping. This middle one will be a fun one because it's nice and wide. So again, using the width of the brush, very lightly scraping. I'll use that Kobo card in a second. I think I want to show you guys that just for fun. Because some of you sound like you were using some different things so we can see how they work. And it's okay if it intersects a little bit. Like if this starts to intersect with the shading of the other one, that's fine. Because what we'll do is we'll add some white here. We'll show the viewer that this still has a nice light side of the mountain. And this one's just nice and, you know, dipping down, dipping right across, right? So it's okay if they combine a little. All right, let's use the Kobo card just to see how that works. Again, I think I'm out of money on this anyway, but either way, I'll keep the code active here. We'll cover it all with paint. So if you're using a card of any kind, you can kind of scrape it into the paint. I don't know if I have enough there. I might need to mix a little more. You want to make sure you have lots of paint on your plates. So you can easily grab it. You can kind of grab or dip it in. So I'm just mixing more with my brush and then I'll dip my card into it. You'll probably have to reload things like cards or 
yeah, business cards, etc. a little more because obviously it's a hard surface so it's not going to store any paint like bristles would. That's why you probably saw me being able to do lots at a time, but for cards and things you might need to be reloading with each and every scrape. So you can see I've loaded up that edge there. Okay. And now I'm just going to, again, position it the same way as I was doing my brush. I'm positioning it on the right hand side and I'm just kind of pressing down and scraping. Ooh, look at that! Yeah, so I'm going to pick up a little more purple, just scrape a few more times. And I find this makes it a little more sporadic, so remember before I was saying with your brush you might have to lift it up and down to get kind of that gapped look? I find with cards it just kind of happens naturally, you don't need to think about it, you're just literally trying to press it down and scrape, and then naturally it'll start to pull paint in certain areas but leave the paint in other areas, so if you're not liking the brush usage, definitely try and find a little business card or just any stiff card, even if it's a credit card, you can wash the paint off later. And uh, yeah, try try using that just for something fun to try out. Or again, a palette knife is the exact same, exact same use there, just using the palette knife with some paint, kind of tapping it on, scraping it on, and then scraping it off. I'm just gonna keep using the brush just because again, that's what I made my other painting with. So I just have two mountains to go, so again, starting at the tip top, kind of scraping down. So again, this one combined a little bit, that's okay. This will be a little bit of a hidden mountain back there, but we'll put some white there and make it pop out a little more later. Okay, gonna bring this guy down a little further here. Again, play with uh, how you're holding kind of the bristles, I guess, so rather than using the full edge, again, you can use a corner and just kind of lightly scrape that. You can have a little more control that way. But hopefully you can see those coming together a little bit. You start to see that nice dark edge. We're going to add the nice white edge next for some nice snow caps, a nice highlight. But yeah, it's all up to you where you want your shading to start and end. Again, I, I do recommend starting it obviously at the top and kind of in the middle, but in terms of ending, you can really swing it to the right, you can really swing it down instead. And again, you'll get some with gaps, you'll get some combined, it'll be a little bit of everything. Okay, so I'll wait for maybe a couple thumbs just to make sure we're all good and then we'll move on to the white. And the white's going to be the exact same technique, just using white paint. So maybe I'll move on in a quick minute here if I see even a few thumbs, just because it's going to be the same, same steps. There we go. Here's a thumb. And I'll say too, if anything looks a little blobby right now, if maybe you feel like maybe too much purple was coming off as you went, you can always grab some gray and do the same thing. Just kind of do a little bit of scraping with your gray right on top, either now or after the purple's dry. And it'll give the exact same technique. It's just gonna break up your purple a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna bring that gray back in. So yeah, try that. I saw a few thumbs, so let's go right ahead here. I'm gonna use the same technique with some white paint now. So I've got white on my brush. And I'm actually going to start on this guy over here because I have one mountain just peeking in there. <laughs> so I'm just doing a little bit there. Thanks for the thumbs, guys. Perfect. But yeah, it is the exact same steps, exact same technique. The only difference is the side that we're working on. So we're working on the left-hand side. So trying my best to just lightly kind of scrape down covering up a little bit of that edge. And I guess the only other thing you're kind of looking at is that you're not overlapping with your purple. So whenever you hit purple on this left-hand side, you're just gonna stop because the white is kind of hiding behind, right? That edge is being hidden behind all of that shading. So you're just gonna stop when you hit that purple there. And the only other difference I would say is you keep the white maybe a little higher up. You can see I didn't really trail the white all the way down with the purple. You could if you want, especially if you want to maybe mix up your mountains a bit, do a couple that have lots of snow or lots of highlight, some that have less. 
but you can see I really tried to kind of keep it up top here. It's just being, I guess, a little more careful. That's the only real difference. You're just really watching that you're not overlapping purple. You're kind of keeping to this left-hand edge. And again, you can kind of see what I'm doing with my brush. I'm kind of lifting it. Maybe I'll show you this angle here. You can kind of see, yeah, like that. So kind of using the corner, lifting on and off, letting it kind of blob off. I'm going to use the whole width for this one here. There you go. And you can see sometimes it comes off a little blobby. That's cool if it happens now and then. Sometimes you really got to work hard to fit it in, of course. You can see that edge was very much covered up by that shadow. That's okay. You can just grab a few little blobs of white in there. And there's that one. And then one more over here. I do kind of like to do a couple just small little dots, maybe like coming down just to make it look like the snow is kind of breaking up before it just abruptly ends. So if you want to tap like just the corner of your brush and drag it a little bit, that'll help kind of break up the snow a little bit on the bottom there. Okay. So I'm going to keep that there just for now as you're still adding your white. I do have one more step before we're quite done with the mountains here. You'll notice that I did add some purple kind of in between our white. I found that just gave it a little more darkness behind uh, without adding a whole layer of purple. It just kind of helped make a few extra little textured areas, I thought. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll give you guys again at least a minute or two though to do that white first. There we go. Wait for a couple thumbs as usual, and then we'll move right along. Just really have uh, yeah the trees and the little canoe feature. That one's a little that one's cute. Mm, excuse me. And yeah, let me know what's working for you. Maybe you found some other techniques to use for doing the uh, the mountains. Who knows? I wonder if even scraping with your fingers maybe would work. I don't know. I've never tried that one. Got a quick thumb there. Got another quick thumb. Okay. Okay, I think we'll go on to the last step. Again, the last step, very repetitive. So if you're still working on the white, just keep going at your own pace. I'll make sure to watch before we move on to the very next step here. But for the last step, I'm just taking my brush again, grabbing a little more of that dark purple, so the same purple I was using at the start for the shading. And again, the only difference here is going to be the placement and just being a little more careful. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to use just the very corner of my brush. You could even switch brushes if you prefer, but I do like this flat edge brush for all of these steps. I'm just kind of using the corner to just almost dot in a few little purple scrapes kind of in between the white. So I'm not trying to mix it on top of the white. That's not the goal because I don't want to make a, you know, light purple or anything. I'm just kind of using the purple, you can see, to kind of go in between any spaces that I'm seeing. And I don't need to do every single space. I'm just trying to cover up a couple. And again, I found that that really helped make it look a little more rocky all around, right? Rather than just having the gray showing through, we now have the gray and little bits of purple. So it makes it look a little more diverse, I guess, a little more scattered in terms of the darkness and the light gray. If you like your mountains the way they were, you don't need to do this step, but when I was looking at mountains online, I felt that this step kind of amped them up a little bit more, made them a little more realistic, even just dying in a couple like that. So again, corner the brush finding any gaps in between your white and just kind of lightly tapping and scraping just to fill in a few little gaps here and there. Again, maybe you like it just with the white there, totally fine. You don't need to force yourself to add this if you don't want to. 
Again, I'm trying my best not to touch the white. If I do touch the white, I just kind of wipe off my brush a bit or wash it off, grab some more purple on there so it's nice and fresh, and then go back to my tapping. So you can these, sometimes I leave it a little more open, sometimes it's a little more dotted, but I think it just adds more texture overall to the whole painting, to the whole mountain range. So that was my thought there. And uh, yeah, you can see I didn't really bring it down a whole lot further, I just kind of stopped where the purple was, but even if you want to keep scraping, you could, in theory, do a little more kind of coming down if you wanted, but I'm going to keep mine open. I'll just demonstrate for there so you can see. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I'll for real wait for thumbs this time just to make sure we're all on track. And then we can move on to our nice big trees. we got some nice big trees in the middle here. So we'll do those next. taking your time guys, want to make sure you're all good with your mountains. I saw a few thumbs there, not too, too many. seen like two or three so I'll keep waiting here just to be sure I saw Lori I saw Hasita I saw about one or two floating ones wait for a couple more again these next trees very Bob Ross inspired super Bob Ross inspired even the placement of them, I was thinking of them as I was placing them. I'll tell you why in a second. Again, I painted this live on stream, and I think people really agreed with me there in terms of when I was putting them on. Hmm. Alright, there's another one or two. Alright, let's go right ahead here. So I'll talk about the trees. You still have another minute or two if you're still painting. There we go. So yes, very Bob Ross inspired. So Bob Ross loves, he loves to put on a beautiful painting. He like paints a beautiful scene. He could be done. And then he goes, let's just add a tree. And then he goes right in front of everything. And everyone's like, why would you do that? Oh my gosh. But then it adds a whole new cool perspective on the painting. So that's honestly what I was channeling as I was doing this. I was like, you know what? It could be a nice painting without these big trees, right? It could be just the nice lake and the nice mountains, but why not add a few trees and then it looks like the person kind of like looking out is very much high up in the trees. It just gives a whole new kind of look and thought and feel to the painting. So I was really channeling him as I was doing it. it took a lot of guts to just put a nice big fat tree or two or three in there, but I think it really paid off. So it really helped me to think of Bob during these next few steps. There you go. Yeah, Deb, that works. Exactly. So you can put gray right on top. Perfect. Yeah, that works, that works. All right, guys, so what we do for these trees is we'll be using the medium size brush. And I do two layers. I do a nice dark green, and then I'll do a very nice light green on top. And that's how you're going to get all this beautiful texture in here. We're going to just do dark green to start. They're going to look a little bit plain. And then when we put on this nice light kind of lime green, it really starts to show off all the nice texture. It looks very, very layered, very fancy. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we can start with a nice forest green. So I would probably pick up actually the green that you used for that second step in here. So remember those very, very dark green uh, streaks we were doing? Hey, Masahu, nice to see ya. So yeah, remember those dark green ones? We're gonna be using that color green. So I would use this nice medium sized brush. And if you haven't mixed it already, or maybe your green dried a little, you can remix. Thanks for the follow. 
So I'm mixing some red and blue together. Oh, excuse me, that's purple. We're doing blue and yellow, I'm so sorry. <laughs> blue and yellow, oh boy. So again, a nice dark, deep forest green, lots of blue, a little bit of yellow, and then some black in there. Yeah, thanks for the fall in the sun. You got me all excited and I messed up my green mixing. <laughs> Lots of blue, a little yellow, and a little bit of black. And the black, again, is going to turn it very, very dark, bordering on black, but not quite. We're still seeing that green pull through. So again, this is a nice base color for our big trees. Okay. So, if you haven't seen me do these trees before, I'll do them for you, or maybe you need a little refresher. What I like to start off with is one big, big, big trunk. So again, this is the scary part. You're just putting a big, big trunk there. So I'm gonna use the kind of thin edge of the brush. I just gonna try my best to do a nice straight line going up and down. You can see how freaking big this is. That's why it's so scary. You're like, oh my gosh, it's like all the way up to the mountain. So it goes like halfway up the mountain. I can't speak Arabic, no. So I'm not sure what you said there. So you've got a nice thin trunk to start. Doesn't need to be super thin either. It can be like, you know, kind of thick. Thanks so much. I'm glad you like it. And then what I'm doing is I'm flattening the brush on my plate so I have all of my bristles lined up. And I'm gonna start just by super lightly tapping on the top of that trunk. You can see what happens is just some little dabs come off. So again, tapping like this, and because I'm using a nice rounded brush, my bristles kind of move from left to right a little bit. They kind of overhang a little bit. And then as I start to move down, I'm gonna move my brush a little left and right as I go. So you can see I'm still tapping, but I'm moving a little left, a little right, a little left, a little right, a little left, a little right. You'll see this a little better when we get back to the bottom here or back to the lake, I should say. Little left, little right, little left, little right, left, right. You can see what I'm doing is I'm making these longer and longer, just slightly as I go down. I wanna go nice and slow because we have lots of room to work with, right? These aren't our regular trees that we have to go kinda quick. We have lots of space to kinda grow them out. So it's very important that you stay nice and tight to the trunk a long time, and then you're just going to very, very slightly bring it out a little further each time. So I'm still tapping, 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 tapping. You can see I like to angle my branches just a little bit down so it's like they're kind of hanging down. They're kind of heavy, being pulled down. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, Joanne, um, let me concentrate on that message in just a second and I'll help you. Going all the way to the bottom, guys. So I'll just leave that here for you to see. I still have one more step with this, but I'll help out Joanne here. And to go over again with blue. Oh, now black is mixing it. Okay, so if you're talking about these ones, maybe, um, you'll want to let that dry for sure. If you go over with blue right now, yeah, it's definitely the black is going to be pulling through and that might cause you some issues. So I would recommend just giving a little pause. If you have a hair dryer handy, maybe give it a little blow dry. I think that would actually help for sure. Yeah, the islands, exactly, yeah. So give it a little blow dry to really, really make it nice and dry. Thanks, mocap. And uh, once it's nice and dry, you will be able to go over top with the blue. It's just that if it's the least amount uh, wet, it's gonna keep pulling through the more you try and go on top. So yeah, it, it'll take a little bit of patience. You'll have to really let it dry, but then you'll be able to go on top again. So try to get a hair dryer if you have one handy. So just to finish this tree, guys, you can see what I've done is I've kind of gone all the way down with my branches. I would say it's not quite as full as I want it. You can see there's lots of gaps here. So all I need to do now is uh, do more of that tapping motion, more in the middle this time. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and I kind of tap a little on top of my trunk, as you can see, but I'm also tapping a little further out into the branches. So I'm kind of like beefing up the branches, you know, at their bases so that they go from thick to thin. So you're still getting those nice thin tips on the ends. You can still see some separation. 
but we're now filling in a little bit more just so it's not quite as empty. We want these to be nice and full. So I'm just using my brush to tap, 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 and you can see slowly it's starting to fill it up. So I find I mostly need to do this near the bottom and middle area. I find closer to the top I probably don't need to do this at all. So I'm just going to stop probably about there. And uh, yeah, I think I just need to fix up the bottom a bit more. I think the bottom's looking a little small, so I'm going to bring that out a little more. There we go. And that's one tree of a few. Thanks again, Mocap. I'm glad you like it. Alright, so I'll demonstrate another one just in case you wanted to see another one there. Maybe that one a little quicker was just a little back and forth for you. So here I go again. Just mix in a new dark green. So I'm going to place another one kind of on the right this time. Maybe a tiny bit lower. Maybe about here. So again, a little scary going right on top of everything, but that's what gives it the look. Okay. And again, I like to start from the top, work my way down, so important, I'm just wiping my brush so that all the bristles kind of line up. I'm going to use the very tip of my brush. You're welcome, Joanne, no problem. And using the very tip, I'm just going to lightly tap along that top part here, just so I get a little bit of branches going on. You can barely see them, they're just kind of very, very tight in there, and that's what we want. We want them to be nice and tight and small. And then as I get further down, I'm going to start tapping maybe a little harder while also moving my brush a little left and right. Again, you won't really see it in here, but you'll see it in a second. So you can see left, right, left, right, tapping, 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 very messily too. Like you can see I am trying to keep these a little bit lined up, but in the end, if you have a little bit of stippling going on, you see how the bristles are kind of moving a little bit rougher there, that's fine. That'll just kind of soften up everything, so that's totally fine. So you can see it's starting to get a little bit bigger. And again, as I move down, I'm just moving these a little further left, a little further right. There we go, there we go, there we go. Tap a little harder as well, that'll get you some larger, larger splotches, I guess, as you go down. And then at the bottom, you can go nice and wide, so you can see how wide I was getting at the bottom, really filling up that bottom area. And you can see I didn't even place, you know, anything for the trees to land on, because I'm kind of imagining that we're almost looking, you know, above the tops of the trees, right? We're kind of looking down, so you wouldn't even see where the trees are ending, right? They're just kind of the tops of the trees. So I'm just going up, I'm filling in the middle a little bit more. And that's good. So it looks like I did a few more trees. I did them a lot smaller, of course. I did like kind of like medium to small size trees more in the middle. So I'm just going to continue the same technique and add those. I'm just going to spruce up this guy a bit. So you can see, you can change the branches as you go, right? So I've decided that I want to move them a little further out, so I'm just tapping a little extra on the ends. Or maybe you have an issue where your branches are a little thick, and you're like, oh, I kind of lost the shape of the branches. Just tap a little extra on the ends, just to separate them a little more, and that'll give you the shape back, right? Because again, you really only need to see those ends to see all the different branches. You don't need to worry about the middles as much. And of course, I guess I should mention too, if you're worried about the fact that you can't really see in here, you will. When we add uh, our nice light green, you will see all those areas. So don't worry, this is just kind of practice for those areas, and then we can add some light green right on top. You'll see, you'll see. So again, I'm just going to add four more trees. I have, I would call them two mediums and two smalls. So I'm going to do a medium one about here. So it kind of comes to almost that first point up there. It's a little slanty, so I'll move that a little over to the left. Again, using the tip of my brush, tap, tap, tapping. And then starting to move left and right as I tap. 
trees take a lot of practice too, so don't be discouraged if maybe it doesn't work the first, second, third time. Just keep trying, keep trying that tapping method. I know other people have lots of other methods for doing trees too, so I mean, if you find something that works a little better for you, totally do it. I know some people like kind of sweeping their brush out, doing more like strokes rather than taps. That works as well. So experiment too. If you're finding a different technique is working, totally go for it. Again, getting nice and wide at the bottom here, and then I'm going to fill in the middle just a little bit, just lightly tapping. There we go. So that's a medium tree. I'll do another, what I would call more of a medium tree right here. And I don't even know if I'll have room for my small guys, but I'll add them anyway. We'll see. And the only difference with the small trees, I guess, is that you want to tap a little lighter, of course, because we have smaller branches to start. So you really want to be delicate right at the beginning, right? You don't want to be tapping too, too hard at the start. Just tap a little lighter to begin with, just to give yourself a little more room to, uh, yeah, to make some delicate branches right at the top. There's a nice medium one. And I did add two small ones over here, but I think I'm just going to add one. I think I closed up the space a little too much in this one here. So I'm just going to do one more small one. Tap, tap, tapping. There we go. Just to fill in a little bit of space. And that goes for you guys too, of course. If you feel like you don't have enough room for something, don't don't feel like you need to add it. You can do whatever order of trees you want. It's all good. That one got a little messy, but that's okay. And if any trees are a little messy, you might be surprised with uh, this light green that we're gonna add. It might really clean them up, so don't judge it too quickly. Things might look a little thick and kind of bulky but then the light green might kind of thin it out a little bit. It might kind of bring out certain highlights and nice small, smaller areas out a little more, you know what I mean? You'll see. But yeah, this is what I got so far, just the nice bases. So I'll keep that there for a minute or two. I'll wait for a few little thumbs indicating you're ready to go. And again, the next step is just going to be adding the nice light green right on top, so. I'll be next. And we only have a little canoe to go. <laughs> we'll see, Sarah. We'll see. I know you're saying earlier, oh, it does not look like hers at all. That's okay. We'll see. Again, as long as you're having fun, I know you said that earlier too, and that's very important. So as long as you're in a good mindset, you're having some good me time right now, painting away, I think it's all good. Because that's what painting is. Painting is just a lot of practice too. Again, I did not get these trees the first time I tried them. It took a lot, a lot of work just experimenting, finding my own kind of groove as I went. So you'll find your groove too, don't worry. Many, many hours of watching Bob, too. That really helped me. <laughs> Very good at displaying what he does and explaining, so... If I can't do it for you, Bob will. <laughs> Try him out. <laughs> it's the best, yeah, exactly. Again, I think it's super important right now that we're all making time for this kind of stuff, so... You came, you're trying, I think that's... All you can do to be good with that for sure. And you'll see too, I think sometimes uh, we're always our own toughest critics as well. We're always looking at our painting being like, oh, I hate this, oh, it's so bad. And then uh, when you post it online, because I always invite everybody to post their photos online when they're done, if you're, if you're willing. Uh, but yeah, I find it's great because then people will actually comment and be like, oh, I really love, you know, this element of your painting or, oh, wow, your trees are amazing. I wish my trees were like that. And you start to see the certain things that other people see that they're like, oh my gosh, that's the best or your clouds are so good, etc. So yeah, we'll see if, uh, yeah, if anyone's willing to do that, we can do that. Exactly, Anna. Yes. Anna loves her palm trees. It took a lot of paintings. Me too, man. Palm trees are hard. I'm still figuring out palm trees. <laughs> 
so many kinds as I was talking about that first painting that I did, the first uh, live stream I did. So many different kinds of palm trees I noticed when I was looking up uh, inspiration photos online. So even if you get one down, you might not get another, or maybe you're not, you're not getting one, and then you can find another one that you can do. Anyway, I'll see a few thumbs. I'll wait for maybe one or two more, and then we can keep going here. Next step is very similar, just a different color. So if you're still working on trees, just keep going at your own pace. You're not really missing anything if you're still working here. But I'll still wait for another thumb or two, just in case. I'll, keep, uh, I'll mix my color in the meantime. But yeah, if you ever <laughs> if you ever watch my Twitch streams, I'll, I'll talk more about that maybe next week on the Facebook page to describe what I'm talking about. But yeah, you'll see me struggle. <laughs> I was painting for five hours today. I was working on two paintings for five full hours. A lot of experimentation, struggling, etc. It looks easy when I do it here because I've experimented first and then I instruct it again, right? But when I'm trying to create these, it's like, oh, what am I doing? And I can't figure it out. And it just takes a lot of patience. Ah, uh, Hasita, yours are still gray. Maybe, I don't know if your gray was maybe still a little wet. But as long as the gray was dry, the white should go on pretty clean when you're kind of scraping it on. So Hasita, maybe you can give it a few extra minutes here. Maybe we can do the last few steps, then you can go back and layer on a little bit more white. Um, it might be that your white is a little bit transparent too. That could be another, another thing that's going on. So maybe a second layer will do it a little bit better for you. Try those, try those tips. All right, so moving on. Thanks guys, moving on to the next step here. I was just mixing together a super, super light gray on my plate, or light green, excuse me, light green on my plate. So it's going to be blue and yellow again. I would mix more yellow in there. And you can also use a little bit of white if you want as well. In fact, I encourage the white because I find it'll help uh, stick on top of the green a little bit better. It won't be quite as transparent. I was just talking about transparency. I find that my yellow is very transparent. So if I'm using yellow to mix green, It'll make the green transparent, so adding white to it, I find really helps brighten it up. It'll help make it stick on top of the green a little bit cleaner. Okay, so we're gonna be doing the same steps, couple differences. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be using a little less paint on my brush, so I'm just kind of tapping it off a little bit. It's not quite dry brushing, I just wanna make sure there's no big blobs on here. And then the only other difference is when we tap on our trees, we're tapping a little bit lighter because we don't want to add a whole layer of green. We're just kind of stippling it on so that we see the dark green through, but we have some light green on top. So here we go here. So I'm just going to do the same technique. So I'm using that nice tip of my brush, tapping very, very lightly, like even lighter than before. But again, same technique. I'm starting to move a little left and a little right. And because I'm tapping a little lighter, you can see less is coming off and it's allowing some of the dark green to show through, right? And that's exactly what I want. I'm just gonna grab a little more, tapping super lightly on top. And just kind of leaving more spaces too. You can see I'm not worried about kind of filling up the whole branch. Maybe you're kind of looking at the top of it kind of squiggling around, going a little below. The point is that I'm using less paint, using a little less pressure, and then that way it's more so stippled on. And that way you get all of those nice, again, dark green showing through from the light green. Oh, no worries, Karn. Oh, that would be so great, Karn, yes. Please do. I'll add the schedule to Twitch, but I'll be doing um, a Saturday and a Sunday tutorial. So maybe what I'll do is I'll list the supplies needed. I do that on Facebook pretty well. I uh, list all the supplies recommended and all that, but I'll try to do that on Twitch too. So if you want to follow along, you can. That'd be so awesome. And some people even just follow along and draw or use like pencil crayons, watercolor, whatever. So anything that you have on hand, I think would be great. But good night, have a great sleep. Thanks for sticking around till 4.45, holy moly. You're gonna sleep through the day. Uh, Hasita, so the light green was lots of yellow, little bit of blue, and then a little bit of white in there. 
And again, I find the white really brightens it up and allows it to kind of pop off of the dark green a little bit better. So I do recommend adding even a little bit of white. See that, how it just adds a whole new layer, lots of texture in there. Oh, I see Joanne. Yeah, if I didn't have this huge light in front of me, I wish I could turn this around easily and show you, but it's like quite literally a big spotlight and I pointed it at the ceiling so it bounces off so it's not directly at me and even still it's super bright. If I didn't have that, I would also be painting very much in the dark right now, so totally relate. And the lighting is all messed up with the window being over there. I can't really keep my back to the window based on how the room is. Anyway, totally relate. Apartment life, man. Limited options. Yeah, you're welcome, Hasita. And then do you have to wait until the dark green is dry? Um, so mine, I would say, is sticky, Kimberly. I wouldn't say you have to wait till it's totally dry. Because it might mix a little bit as you go, but you do want, of course, the light green to kind of stick on top, right? So you wouldn't want it to be super, super wet, or else the light green would blend, I would think, too much. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it needs to be totally dry. If it's a little sticky, that's fine. Just go for it, I would say, and if it's causing you issues, like you're not seeing the light green pop up and it's just totally mixing in, then just give it a couple extra minutes, maybe. I think you should be fine, though. All right, go on to this last bigger tree over here. So you need to continue to see me do the steps, same thing, I'm just grabbing a little bit of green, kind of zigzagging back and forth, left and right, lightly tapping, so trying to leave a few extra gaps in between my taps. You can see I'm not even like trying to stick to the tops or bottoms of branches or anything, I'm really just lightly tapping it everywhere. I don't think it's really needed to, you know, concentrate on the top edge or bottom edge, I think we're going to have some light green everywhere. I think there's lots of light. It's a nice daytime painting. So we're going to have lots of light green everywhere. It doesn't need to be on a specific edge or anything. Just in case anyone was wondering. The theory there. There you go. And again, you can see now that this pops off of even the dark green right there. So it was worth it to do all that little bit of work just to show myself where I need to go. That guy's a little tilty, I'm just going to fix him up. Because again, the light green really helps, uh, helps it pop off, even in the darker areas there. So, there you go. Okay, just wanted to even it out a bit. Oh, no worries, Kimberly, yeah. That's a good question, I should have clarified for sure. I would say mine is sticky too. Even right now, I would still say there's some dark green that's a little sticky. It's really as long as you don't have big blobs of paint, then you should be good. Because the blobs are what's going to mix into the light green and maybe affect it. But again, stickiness is cool. That's fine. All right, so once again, I'll leave a minute or two here. We only have one more, like one more mini step, I guess. We have a couple steps within it, but it's just the little canoe that I'm adding. So it's again a couple steps in there, but it's one last element that we're doing. And of course, as usual, you can change that up for sure if you'd rather do just a blank lake or a kayak or someone swimming. Maybe they're like, hello, and they're <laughs> swimming in the lake. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think people usually swim in that lake, but it's your painting. You do what you want. Throw some birds in there. I don't know. Wildlife. You can do lots of wildlife options in here. So I'll go through the canoe with you, of course, but feel free to get creative if you uh, have any, any other thoughts. What do you want to add? Just giving a minute or two. And if anyone has any other questions, just let me know if anything's not working for you. I'm happy to try my best to help you, of course, as you see me doing with others. So just let me know at any time. Is all good. Give another minute or so just to see some more thumbs. You can see it's pulling together though. Let's see me. 
Uh, trees take some time for sure. All that tapping. Getting it all right. Had a nice little thumb there. Oh, you're welcome, Melissa. You're all done. Maybe leaving out the canoe or maybe you already did it. Post your photo, post your photo. I'll start to go over to the event page right now and start to uh, play around with uh, allowing posting there so we can have that ready to go. I saw a couple more thumbs. Oh, I can, Stephanie. That's a great question. Yeah. I just didn't have it right beside me. I need to find it. I think it's over there. <laughs> over here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll teach a little bit of the canoe and then I'll run and get it and I'll show you if you want to see it. I think it's a fun little one. Very customizable. That's why I kept encouraging uh, more of the family element, I think. Because I think uh, the kids will have fun kind of customizing with it, personally. Oh, Alexa's like, hello. Oh. Uh, maybe they look a little spooky, like maybe they're a little dark. You're welcome, Kathy, no worries. If they're a little dark, uh, that was Alexis, maybe try adding a little more of that light green on there. Um, if they're spooky, I'm trying to picture what that would look like. Because mine, all, honestly, I think they look a little spooky too before I add the light green on top because they're so, so dark. Um, maybe beefing them up a bit too. I would think spooky kind of means that maybe they have more long, thin, branches, maybe try just adding a little more right in the middle. That'll kind of make them a little more triangular in total rather than like spooky kind of like, woo, you know, like fingers kind of coming out. So I would try that too, kind of tapping in the middle. Yeah, sorry Alexis, I can't see it, but um, what you could do, I always offer if people want to uh, private message the, the Facebook page, the Aaron Bun Paints Facebook page, I can always have a look and then I can always instruct uh, what you need to do. So feel free to do that and I can always respond to you whenever I can and uh, kind of lead you through the best I can after looking. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think skeleton means maybe things are a little thin. I know what you mean. Like I actually describe my trees as skeleton trees before that last step of kind of dabbing in the middle. So try tapping maybe a little more in the middle so it kind of beefs them up. See how it like extends the middle here? Because if I had no middle here, it would be very skeleton, like kind of popping out. So maybe try beefing up just the middles a bit. But yeah, otherwise feel free to private message the page and I'll help you. All right, so I did see thumbs, so let's go right ahead to the canoe and then we can keep chatting if anyone has any other questions there. Oh, I'm glad you like the card. Awesome, Charlene. Okay, so see this little thing? It's so tiny. <laughs> so what I did is I just did kind of like a little banana shape. For my little canoe i did it in red you can do of course whatever color you want but i chose red for my canoe i thought it was kind of a traditional canoe color i did mine on a slant personally but you can do it straight if you want and yeah that's what i started with a little uh, red banana shape that's what i would call it so it has two tips kind of coming up on the sides here did a nice flat bottom a nice curved top so it looks like it's uh resting in the water with the flat bottom but it has a nice curved top for the canoe shape so I'm going to do that with a nice red and with a nice teeny tiny brush. I would grab the smallest brush you have if you're following along with this canoe. And again, red paint. That's what I'm going for here personally. I'm trying to get clean red. Hopefully that works. And again, you can make the canoe going wherever you want. I'm kind of slanting it up like it's kind of traveling to the mountains. That's kind of what my thought was. Oops, yeah, that was not clean red. I need to put a little more. So I'm doing kind of the two tips, kind of curving up like that. So it starts up here, comes down, comes back up. So a nice little curve to begin with. Just having trouble finding my red paint there. And then what I'm doing is I'm keeping those two tips thin. I'm just bringing down the bottom a little bit, flattening the bottom, and then bringing it back up. So I would call this kind of a banana shape. It's not quite as round as a banana because I want that bottom to be a little more flat because what happens is the, the canoe kind of sinks into the water, right? And it'll create a flat bottom. 
So that's why I keep saying we want the flat bottom edge of the canoe. And that's just gonna be kind of like the tips and the top edge that kind of curve, right? So it really does, in my opinion, look like a little banana just resting in the water. It's so teeny tiny, so there's really not a whole lot of detail you need to worry about. I think I just need to fix up this edge here. If it helps, if you're angling the canoe like me, you might wanna, might wanna tip your canvas so you can kind of see if everything's level and symmetrical. So I just need to bring down this left-hand side a bit to match. There we go, it looks a little better. Yeah. So again, tilt it, tilt it, there we go. So you can see as if it's horizontal, and then that way when you tilt it, tilt it back, it's gonna be kind of angled, right? So I just did the red for the canoe. I did kind of like silhouette bodies. Again, tried to keep it as simple as possible. I did not wanna worry about shoulders and things like that. I really just did two little dots for the heads and then kind of like a little neck kind of coming down into the, the canoe so it kind of hides. And then I did add what I think are paddles. Here I'll show you a nice close up. So again I started just with two little circles for the heads. I kind of brought down their bodies just so they're hiding in the canoe. And then all I did is I did some straight thin lines for some paddles. So I did one paddle on the right hand side here, one on the left. So this one just kind of pokes up from the top and doesn't intersect with the, uh, with the canoe. So again, if you want to change that up, feel free. But I tried to keep it as simple as possible just so no one's stressing over creating the actual bodies in there. They're just going to be two little heads and they're going to be minuscule, right? Cause we're looking from way up here. So it makes sense, honestly, that these are nice and teeny tiny. You can barely see what's going on. So I'm just doing a small little dot in the back, small little dot in the front. So I just kind of used my brush and just did two small little brush strokes. And then I brought down kind of like a thinner line just to make it look like maybe the body is coming down into the boat. So it just ends when it reaches the little banana there. I'm going to try my best to round those out a little bit more. More like square heads. But again, you don't need to worry about making it perfect because they're so far away, right? That's kind of the point. They're never going to be the exact shapes they actually are. Then just grabbing a tiny bit more black on my brush. You can even wipe it on the edge of your plate to kind of help line up the bristles. And I just decided to do a paddle it's kind of coming down to the left here, so it looks like it's kind of coming into the water. So it's intersecting with that canoe. I didn't even draw arms, like I'm not worried about who's holding it, it's just kind of there. <laughs> and then I did a second paddle coming down to the left as well, but this time it doesn't intersect with the canoe because I wanted it looking like it was on the other side. Just small tiny details in there, that's it. And then I have one more thing to add. I just want to show you that nice close-up of the silhouette just so you can see how little detail there is there just a teeny little bit Okay, so the last little step here, I'm just gonna do that last little step of the canoe. I just added a little bit of a white water line, just kind of trailing behind. So once again, I'm using my little detail brush here, and I'm just gonna go from the front of the boat and just very, very lightly do a little line coming out. And then I did another line coming out the other way, so it's kind of coming out in a little bit of a V shape. You can add a few other little strokes kind of bordering a bit, but yeah, that's really all there. So just creating a little bit of a wake. And you don't need to do solid lines. You can see how I kind of broke up the lines a little bit, made them nice and thin. So they don't need to be thick. They don't need to be solid. They can be just kind of like a little bit ripply. Oh, Dorothy, you maybe sent that a little early. Feel free to 
Let me know what you need help with, maybe. Can't get my thing that small. Oh, okay. You might need maybe just a second coat of red. Maybe your red is a little transparent. Mine is a little bit too, but I really caked on my red. So you might want to wait for your red to dry, and then you can do a second coat of red on top, and it's probably going to brighten it up for you. I think pink means it's a little transparent, or it may be just mixed with a little bit of white somehow, but it's probably the transparency. Okay guys, so that was the last little step, just adding your little canoe feature, so that's all set now. So as usual, I encourage you to sign your painting whenever you're done, so I'm just going to give a little signature in the bottom corner. There we go. Okay. So if anyone, again, if anyone was painting along there and they have any questions or something wasn't working out for them, just let me know and I can do my best to help you and give you a few suggestions. Uh, otherwise, things to look out for. Again, I'll be uh, posting a little poll tomorrow for uh, our start time for Sunday. Oh, I'll get the fishy painting. One sec, one sec. Okay, so I think I actually previewed it on a previous stream, but here here she is. Again, it's nothing, nothing too crazy. I just want to do something a little more simple this time. I know a lot of you said you like painting with your kids, and some of these may have been a little difficult for them, so I thought this one was a nice kind of in-between. We have some nice blending here, this nice kind of spotlight here. Uh, have a few little rocks. We have some coral seaweed, a little starfish feature, and then some fish, of course. And I highly suspect that we'll be getting lots of customizations here. I saw a lot of you posting little Dory uh, gifts there. We saw some Nemos. Uh, some of you were doing the little octopuses, things like that. So I think this one will be really cool because you can customize, right? You don't need these two yellow fish as your feature. You can do a clownfish or a little squid or whatever you want. You can do a bigger starfish, whatever you want. So anyway, that'll be on Sunday as we said, and uh, yeah, we'll all decide on the time together. Cool. And then yeah, Charlene and everyone else, those Niagara Falls, that Niagara Falls painting, I think that'll be sometime like late next week. We'll see. Again, just watch the Facebook page as usual. I'll announce it all there, so don't you worry. It'll all be there. Hey B. oh, I see you just joined. Welcome. We're just ending. Actually, Manny, keep joining when we're ending. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad you guys liked it. Stephanie's saying she loves the fish one. Kimberly loved this one. Awesome. And Kathy as well. You're welcome, Lori, as well. Yeah, and then we have the cardinal cherry blossom. Oh, see, that's why I really wanted cardinals. First of all, I know Anna loves cardinals, but also a lot of you seem to have very sentimental things with your cardinals attachments. Yeah, and I think that's really, really sweet that a lot of you want to paint things in memory of or just as a symbol of. So. That's why I wanted to add a few cardinals, just rather than just plain cherry blossoms, I thought cardinals were a nice little addition. So yeah, this will be Saturday, again, 2 p.m. EST, I believe. We've already scheduled that one in. There's a Facebook event if you want to RSVP. Uh, but yeah. And then uh, what else here? Anything else I'm forgetting? Oh, uh, if you want to post photos, again, I really hope that you want to post some photos. I'll open up the event page right now for you so that you can go to the event page and uh, post your beautiful photos of your paintings whenever you're ready. And then, as usual, I guess this was a completely free stream. This is what they're always going to be. They're always going to be free. So if anyone would like to uh, support me here, um, I put some tip links in the top description. So thanks very much for those who are looking to do that. E-transfer PayPal is there. but. Otherwise, again, I just really appreciate everybody coming and having a great time. It's just always fun chatting with everybody and uh, encouraging everyone to get, get creative. So thanks so much for coming in live. And uh, and again, if you can't come in live either, totally understandable too. You can keep watching those YouTube videos, yeah. Awesome. I'm glad I'll see some of you. It looks like a lot of you are saying Saturday, some of you Sunday. Oh, and I'm glad a lot of you are saying this is your favorite one too. That's kind of my goal to keep upping it with uh, each design, honestly. It seems like with each one we're getting more and more that people are saying, this one's my favorite, this one. So that's very, very exciting to see. So thank you, Robin, and anyone else saying that. That's very cool. What's your little gif there, Julie? Oh, I see. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 
I had to click it on my other computer because this one's going so slow right now. You're so welcome. That's so cute. Yeah, thanks Charlene as usual. Thanks Stephanie as usual for coming. You're welcome, Sarah. You're welcome, Karen and Mary and Lori again. Yeah, have a great evening, everybody. You're welcome, Julia. I'm almost done editing that event. It's just taking a little bit. Yeah, like my screen is blanking out at this point. This computer needs help. You're welcome, Charlene. Oh, your little emojis are so cute. Okay, I just want to make sure this is all cleaned up before I uh, sign off here. Okay, anyone can post. There we go. All right, so that event page is ready for posting if you want to post any photos. I'm going to post the link real quick just so you have it, but you know where to find it, I think. There it goes. Awesome. Okay, guys, uh, I'll officially sign off. I think everyone's all good kind of signing off as well. So thanks so much for coming, everybody. And I'll see you on Saturday or Sunday or, or at any other live stream coming up. Okay. You're welcome, Dorothy. You're welcome, Kathy. Oh, thanks so much. Okay, bye, guys. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, B. Thanks for